subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I finally want to address some commonly asked questions. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this video. Am I even gonna post this video? Because this looks like a lot of TMI. But what is life if you're not using it to help somebody, you know? What, is, what are all the experiences in life if you don't use it to make somebody else go through life easier? So I may just post this. I don't know. I tell myself all the time, like, my experiences are to teach somebody else out there. But then every time I sit down to do this video, see, I'm not even looking at the camera because clearly I'm going through stuff in my head right now. But every time I sit down to do this video, like, there's this part of me that's just like mm, you're not gonna post it mm, you're not gonna post it you can't post that you shouldn't post that let people let people be let people just be curious all the time but then there's the other part of me that's like there's that little girl just like you were when you were you know 17 and diagnosed with a spinal cord injury and you were sad that you wouldn't be able to do certain things and you were sad that life is over and you needed Somebody like you who has been through it to tell you that everything was gonna be okay, but you didn't have that person So there's that part of me. That's like I want to be that person for somebody else that may be going through stuff. I want to be Available to answer questions. I try my best to answer questions in emails I do it like without even thinking but when it comes to YouTube YouTube is like this video can end up anywhere You know what I mean? And I'm not doing anything bad on it, but for me, I just had to get through this part of my brain to come on YouTube and answer these questions. And once I told myself I was gonna do this, I guess I'm just going for it now. I'm just, I'm just going for it. Popular questions that you guys ask me. Don't judge me. Don't use this video to look at my husband a certain way or look at me a certain way. If you do, you know what? It's even on you. It's okay. I don't really care. Right now, just make sure you subscribe so you can get more juicy stuff. <laughs> Make sure you like this video, make sure you turn your notification bell on because Lizzie 2.0 is coming on YouTube and she's about to be like a talker team just to help somebody out there. I, I know people say it a lot and we don't even trust anybody anymore. Social media has made it such that if somebody shares, they're sharing too much. If somebody doesn't share enough, they're being fake. You know, it's like... So a couple of weeks ago, I was on Instagram and I told you guys to ask me your most pressing questions. Like, what is that question you've always wanted to ask me, but you're like, I don't want to be rude. You don't want to come across like you're being insensitive or you're being too, too intrusive. So I just kind of gave you guys an opening to ask me whatever questions because some people actually email me these questions and I don't mind. I honestly genuinely don't care when people ask me questions about my diagnosis, about why I'm on a wheelchair, about fashion. I don't care. I prefer you come to me and ask me your question in a polite manner than to just assume. So definitely if you are watching this video and you still have some questions, please don't hesitate to email me. I prefer emails because I can keep track of emails better than DMs or comments. But if your comment is something that you don't mind writing down below, please go ahead and just write it down and I will try to answer your question in the comment box below. Okay, so for starters, how am I on a wheelchair? What brought me here? How, what's going on? It's like, we need stories, we need something. You be sharing your life and we see everything that you do and can do and we see your testimony, but how did you get here, Lizzie? That's like the first question everybody kind of has in their mind when they see me. It's almost like, um, why are you on a wheelchair? I had a car accident in 2008. It was a bad, bad accident. It resulted in a spinal cord injury and it affected me at level C4, C5. Now, of course, if you know about spinal cords and the levels, you're thinking, oh my God, that's really high level of injury, but you're using your hands, Lizzie. How does that make any sense? Well, I did sever my spinal cord at a C4, C5, but over the years, I have regained some functions. It started with where I couldn't even use my hands, and now, of course, I can use my hands and I gained some function back, but... I'll get into those functions with some of the questions that you guys actually ask me. How do I cope? How do you cope? What resulted into this? 
just take each day one at a time honestly speaking take each day one at a time everything that i have been able to do up till this point has just been because i have decided that i will figure it out once i get there i'll figure it out once i get there i'll figure it out i get sad matter of fact i was sad before i started filming this video i was like ugh, i don't know if i can do this because I have to sit up. If you guys can notice, I've been like resting here, living here. The things you don't see are the cuts that I have in this video because I get tired. Like I have to stretch just so I can look good. Like if I want to sit very comfortably, this is how I want to sit. Like just like this. Like this is not flattering to anybody. If you're watching the video and I stay like this all through the video, are you going to be happy? No. So basically, how do I cope is just take it one at a time and encourage myself through it. Like I had to encourage myself to start filming this video. This is my comfortable position right here. Like if I wanna do this video in a very, if I wanna do this video in a very comfortable position, this is it. How I look at my videos and all of that stuff is just because I'm finessing for the camera. But if I wanna stay in my comfortable position, like literally all of my videos will be filmed like this because I have no back muscles. I have no back control. I have none <laughs> it's like this is my comfortable position right here with my ha my hands under my chin and my back just like free from stretching but because i want to look presentable on youtube i stretch for you guys i prop myself up i do all these things and yeah i hope you guys appreciate it though but to answer that person that asked me, how do you cope and make this look so easy? Honestly speaking, you just gotta do what you gotta do, okay? <laughs> you just have to finesse it, you know? You just have to do what you gotta do. So now that I'm filming for you guys, this is it. This is what my outfit actually looks like. But I don't like the way the outfit looks. I don't. I, I feel like it makes me look boxy. I wanna show my shape more. So what do I do? I push it in. Thankful I have a back rest so i push it in and then i do this and then i make my body look awesome as i want it and then i put my hand here because it's so comfortable and i do this because i know this makes me look good and i talk to you guys you see everything i just did right now like you didn't see all that before because clearly i didn't show it to you but just imagine you don't even know all the stuff that I have to go through and you see this and you start comparing it to yourself like that's not fair to yourself don't compare yourself to anybody just try to get inspiration from wherever you can but don't compare yourself to people because you're gonna be depressed you're gonna be sad you're gonna think you're not where you're supposed to be because that person is also this and they are doing way better than you are doing when I take pictures on Instagram it's, 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 it's a skill. I stretch, tuck things in, take photos, accentuate my best figures. Sometimes I do this. And then you bug me many times like, how does it look? Well, you have to be my mirror, so yeah. And then I ask him, how do I look? And then he takes the pictures. You guys can see him. Then he takes the photos and I pick, I take like, it takes like 50 pictures and I pick my favorite one, okay? Just one photo where I look like, ooh, get it girl, you see? But before we got here... Did I sign up to be Instagram husband? Yeah, Instagram husband, no! <laughs> you don't gotta sign up boo, it comes with a contract. But you guys see, like, if I take a photo like this, clearly you're thinking, oh my gosh, look at her abs, look at her boobies. But like, in everyday life, like... This is what I want to do and sit down like this, okay? Because it's so comfortable. It's so comfortable. But I'm not going to do that for the gram. Because who does that for the gram, huh? Who does that? <laughs> so yeah, I think I just answered all of that questions. How I take my hair. Hey, hey, I have a question. How I look like. What? Where'd you get this lovely hair from? Babe, the hair is from Remy Hair Quarters on Instagram. Y'all check them out. So you're trying to say I should watch your videos? Yeah, please go watch my videos because I'll have a link in the description box for you if you're interested in my hair. Am I interested in your hair? You just asked me where I got it from. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. It looks good on you. Does it though? Did you stain with your makeup? No. <laughs> okay, just go. Let me finish answering people's questions because I still have some emails. I, I have, have questions of my own. What are your questions? Okay. What are your questions, sir? Is your husband the best husband though? <laughs> Do 
Can y'all see this? Moving on. Next question says, is it possible for someone with spinal cord injury to have sex? Please don't be offended. I am definitely not offended. This question is quite possibly the most popular question that I get from people, especially because, you know, y'all know that I'm married. So a lot of people are like, oh, is she having sex with her husband or no? But you guys, it is possible for somebody. Let me speak for myself. Let's rewind. I am answering most of this question based on my experience, my diagnosis, my everything. It doesn't mean you should compare me to your sister, your brother, or that one person you know in your church that's also on a wheelchair. Everybody's diagnosis is different. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's experience, everybody's length of injury is different. Like there's just so many things that please, please, please don't compare my story, my abilities to somebody else that you know that is on a wheelchair. That is not fair to them. And it is definitely not nice of you to look at other people as if they are not doing that thing that you know somebody else is doing. So is it possible for someone on a wheelchair to have sex? Yes, it is. It is possible for me to have sex. Um, most women that I know with spinal cord injury can still have penetrative sex, if that's the question you have. Now, it's a whole different ballgame depending on their level of injury and how incomplete or complete that their injury is. Some people have complete spinal cord injury. Some people have incomplete spinal cord injury. Some people actually are paralyzed in the legs, but they have sensation all through their body. Some people can move the leg, but they don't even know that they're moving the leg. Like they, this is so broad and so wide and so many variables are involved in exactly what a person can feel during sex or even feel in general. So I cannot answer for everybody when I say yes, somebody with a spinal cord injury can have sex. But I do want to kind of debunk the myth that, oh, just because you have a spinal cord injury or because you're in a wheelchair, you cannot enjoy sexual things. Like, no, that's not true. That's definitely just something that I don't know where it came from, but nah, it's not true. And if you are asking if me, Lizzie, can have sex and if I enjoy it, the answer is yes. And if that's CMI, then you shouldn't ask me anyway, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh yeah, I go to the gym every day. I still try to go to the gym once in a while. It's not every time, but I do. That strap is from Amazon and I'm gonna have it in the description box below it's also the same strap that i use when i wear dresses or when i want to keep my legs together like sometimes when i'm just sitting down not even doing anything i use the strap to put my legs together so that i can be more comfortable like right now i actually have the strap holding my legs together as you can see because it just helps me sit upright more and i like the way it makes me look but i usually just wear it underneath a dress also the strap may help you if you don't, if you want to carry your legs and you can't do transfers like really well, you can use the strap to just put yourself, your legs, where you're going. If you're not walking regularly, swollen fit is pretty much very common. And yes, I do get swollen fit, but what I do is every night when I get on the bed, I prop my feet up because we need circulation to flow, we need things to go back where they belong, and I do get swollen well face. It's not fun, it's not fun, but it happens. And with the swollen feet comes another question that I get asked a lot. So how do you wear high heels and certain shoes? If you guys notice, I mostly wear lace-up shoes because they allow me to control the lace and the tightness when my legs swell up. Basically, the theme in all of your comments is how strong I am, and I'm just like, am I strong? But honestly speaking, I, somebody said they want to know my success story, like how I am able to be where I am and stuff like that. It is God. There's no missing words. There's no two ways about it. It is God. God has given me the attitude that I think I have right now towards life. God has placed people in my life. Like, I thank God for the people he has put in my life. My friends, my family. It's just God. I cannot begin to take credit because I know that 
where I am right now and how I've been able to get here has only been nothing but God. And I want to really just say, if you are out there and you feel like, oh my God, why am I not, you know, happy now after all these bad things that happened to me? I want you to know that it would take some time. We're not gonna sugarcoat anything on here, okay? It will take you some time, but you will get there if you ask God for help and if you have an open attitude towards life. You have to be open-minded. You have to know that this life is for the living. You have a purpose. Everybody has a purpose in life. There is nothing under the sun that you're going through that God is not aware of. And I'm a Christian, so that's where I'm coming from with my response. But honestly speaking, a positive attitude towards anything in life will get you farther than just being sad and negative and depressed. I mean, if you have a medical depression, then see a doctor. But you know what I mean, right? Y'all get it, right? Okay. Bowel and bladder. How do you pee? How do you poop? How do you control your bowel and bladder? So this is a very deep one. Now, if you are a spinal cord injury patient, you're probably waiting on this, like, is Lizzie gonna touch up on this subject? Or is she gonna try and be like those other people that try to say they are doing Q&A, but they did not answer? Clearly, I was gonna get there because somebody asked me. So bowel and bladder is a huge deal when you have spinal cord injury problems. Like, can you pee? Can you feel when you need to pee? Can you poop? Can you feel when you need to go poop? This is like questions that, if you are a spinal cord injury patient, you kinda wanna know, like, Lizzie, What's up? My injury level was a C4, C5, and now it has like kind of gotten to a T1, T2. So I don't even have to tell you anything if you know about spinal cord injuries to know that your girl does not have it easy, okay? Your girl does not have it easy. Not easy at all. So if you don't know about spinal cord injury and you're just curious, like, so uh, what do you do? With the pain, I use catheters. Catheters go into your urethra to empty your bladder. I use catheters to empty my bladder because I can feel pressure when my bladder is full and then I go into the restroom or wherever because it's a catheter, you know, you don't gotta be in a restroom to pee. And then I do what I gotta do and I do this and I'm gone. Also, a popular question I get regarding bladder is some people will ask me that they can feel that they need to pee but before they make it to the restroom they pee on themselves and do I have any recommendations for that I'm not a doctor now I'm not trying to be on YouTube teaching you what you should be asking your doctor or nurses or caregivers or whoever you have to ask those questions I'm just here to share my own experience and keep it going so for me believe it or not I use adult underwear you don't know what that means right i wear adult underwear every day everywhere i go all the pictures you see on instagram i have it on like there are really good ones out there that you don't have to feel like you're bulky or like you're a baby ah this is so interesting i am sharing my whole life on youtube right now but hey, I'm trying to help you and I'm tired of replying the same things in emails so I just want to be able to send this video to anybody that has any question for me because typing every time somebody asks me the same question is too much. Like I said to you guys, I do wear adult underwear so even if I were to have an accident because accidents are like the scariest thing ever. You don't want to have an accident like a pee accident you know or bowel blood you know like a poop accident you don't want that so i have been wearing adult underwear ever since the accident happened i'm not gonna lie to you guys i have been doing that because i just don't want a situation where i embarrass myself in public it's happened before <laughs> yes if we're gonna go into that but it's not a very frequent occurrence so i would like to keep it that way <laughs> I would like to keep it that way. So if you are somebody who feels like, oh my God, I don't wanna have to resort into wearing that, honestly, if it makes you feel safer and confident and just more secure in going out for hours, then why not do it? Why not? I'm not saying pee on yourself because that's definitely not a good thing. You don't want skin and pressure sores. So don't wear it with the intention to pee if you can empty your bladder yourself please don't do that don't do that i'm only saying wear it if you feel like you're not sure enough that you would get to the restroom on time to empty your bladder so yeah 
I definitely am an advocate for wearing adult underwear. If you have to, gotta do what you gotta do to get where you're going. I've worn it in pretty much every picture, video, anything you've ever seen with me that, that I've been in ever since I've been on this um, chair, I've had it on. Even on my wedding day, I had adult underwear on. I bet you didn't even know that, did you? Because they make them so smooth. I have it on right now, Seth. They make them so, you know, they are like basically boy shorts, in my own opinion. Maybe I have like... You have to get a good brand. You have to get a good brand, okay? Link, good, good link thinking. Or I don't know about Link because I get mine through the DME. No, just but, the name, I guess. Okay, I'll put the name. I use the Prevail brand. The Prevail brand is literally the best that I have used. I have used ones that is like small accident and size like this. Ah, it's already seeping through everywhere. That makes no sense to me. That's just so dumb. So make sure you get a good brand. Talk to your DME provider. Or go to the store if you're in Nigeria or any other country where you don't have DMEs. DME, I don't really remember the full meaning of a DME, but if I find it, I'll put it here. So the DME is basically the company that provides your catheters, your underwear. Hey, Chioba Jairo, Lizzie is definitely doing a Q&A today because she's telling everything. Okay, so get that for yourself. Make, you make, prepare yourself for accidents because you didn't do this to yourself did you make yourself have a spinal cord injury i mean even if you did well it has happened it has happened you know i know i didn't do this to myself <laughs> but now that it's here we just gotta roll with it take it out a day at a time figure out what works and what doesn't work and even if you did something that resulted in you having a spinal cord injury it's okay it's happened it's happened we just gotta move on with life you know it's it's, it's okay it has happened, it has happened. Let's just keep it going, figure out what works now, and yes. So bowel and bladder, definitely, sometimes I can poop. What Like if I have eaten a lot of fiber, I can just sit on the toilet, let that go, you know, do what I gotta do, get it out. But if I haven't eaten a lot of fiber and I'm like, okay, it's been two, three, four days and you haven't pooped, Lizzie, I use a suppository. What is a suppository? You should know it. If you're watching this video as a, health worker or a spinal cord injury patient you know what suppositories are some people even use, i know people who use suppositories and they don't even have any issues it's just because they help you the way i see it is if something can help you don't feel too depressed that you don't take advantage of it you, like if it's there to help you why would you just use it you know so sometimes yes i will use a suppository like I don't have time to sit in the restroom for 50 hours so suppository all the way in there and get the stuff out and we're moving on with our day you know what I'm saying so yes that's the answer to that question so yeah initially I couldn't pee by myself I couldn't feel when I needed to pee I have to pee every four hours every three hours every two hours or whatever the case was and then later on when I felt that my bladder was full I would go cast myself and now that's kind of what I do on a day regular basis I do have a standing cream that I try to use. When I say try, I try to use it. I don't use it all the time, child, but I try to use it and that just helps with circulation all over my body. It helps me to um, just circulation all over my body. It also helps with muscle mass, which is another question that I get asked. People are always like, your legs don't even look like you're disabled. Ah, you're lying. Why are you on the wheelchair? You're not disabled. Your leg look like another person's leg. And I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> okay, and I'm like, well, I, I don't have a straight answer to that, okay? Because if I'm gonna be honest with myself, it's not like I use my standing frame every day. I'm grateful to God that you think I don't look like I need to be on a wheelchair. Praise the Lord for that. But I don't really have a an answer. I don't know how to say that oh i do this or do that to keep my legs looking like i'm not on a wheelchair I, I don't know the way to answer that question um praise the lord that's pretty much it i thank god that my legs don't look how you think they should look i, I don't know another question that people ask me is you're too pretty to be on a wheelchair why are you on a wheelchair and i'm like well thank you for saying i'm pretty <laughs> however <laughs> what should a wheelchair user look like you guys please please that's a very touchy one okay that's a very touchy one because you are insinuating that because i am in a wheelchair i should look ugly 
that's a touchy subject like ah, don't do that don't do that <laughs> i know you want i know i just said that i'm okay with questions but there are some questions that don't sound right come on you are too pretty to be on the wheelchair you think it's a compliment but it's almost like an insult i don't know how to I, there's it depends on the day you say it okay some days i'm like girl yes i am <laughs> on some other days i'm like what's wrong with you what's what's wrong with you are you okay <laughs> So it just depends on when you catch me and what you catch me doing and what I'm going through. What if it's a day like I want to eat cheesecake but I can't find cheesecake and now I'm sad and then you go tell me like I look too pretty to be on a wheelchair and I'm thinking first I don't have cheesecake and now I'm too pretty to be on a wheelchair. Like it just it depends on the mind frame you catch me. So don't tell people that. I don't think I met anybody that's a wheelchair user that actually finds that as a compliment we discuss it amongst ourselves it's almost like why why do you think that's a compliment you look too pretty to be dark skinned just think about it you look too pretty to be light skinned do you want me to go deeper you look too pretty to be short you look too pretty to be tall y'all see it y'all kind of get where i'm coming from now okay Anyway, so yeah, I get it a lot. Are you able to have babies? Are you able to have children? Are you going to be pregnant for your husband one day? Is he going to leave you if you cannot have a baby? Uh, what are you going to do? Baby, 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 Okay, wait, get serious. People ask me this all the time. Baby, baby, can you have one, Lizzie? Now, I'm going to answer as Lizzie. In the name of Jesus, I can have one, okay? Because, I mean, my doctor hasn't told me otherwise. My body isn't doing anything different. So, by God's grace, just like the same chance you have as a female, your sister has as a female, or the same chance I have as a female. Now, of course, I don't want to be all stupid and act like I don't know what people mean when they ask this question. They mean, how you gonna carry a pregnancy if you see it every day? How you gonna deliver the baby? Is it gonna be vaginal? How are you gonna feel when it's time for the baby to come? I know people mean deeper when they ask me, am I gonna have a baby? Or am I able to have a baby? So I'm not gonna act like I don't understand where people are coming from. So I will answer that question based on my own experience and my diagnosis. Now, after a spinal cord injury, your body is basically in shock, trauma, it's a traumatic situation for your body. So, as a female, you may not see your period again, okay? It's possible, depending on how affected you are. Now, for me, thankfully, my period came back as I was in ICU. Next month, I saw the period again. The next month, I saw the period again, and I have been seeing the period ever since then. So, the same chance every woman who sees a period has are the same chances I have. Does that answer the question? When it comes to delivery and childbirth and all of those other things, it's not that different, but just think about it like it's definitely something to discuss with your doctor does that make sense it's kind of like if you're 35 and you're still trying to get pregnant you have to talk to your doctor because now you are in a different category of like a woman trying to give birth you know it's not like you can't do it because we've seen people like older giving birth to babies but it's just more so that you have to have a doctor watch you more or something i don't know from my experience, my OBGYN was like, girl, get pregnant when you're ready and we'll take it from there. Just like everything else in my life, when we're ready to get pregnant and I do get pregnant, we're just going to take it from there. I don't know if I will update you guys, but <laughs> we're going to take it from there. Okay, so that's pretty much the answer to that question. Do I want babies? Of course I want babies. Babies are so cute. And yeah, we will have babies. And when the time comes, you guys will see the babies. No? Yes. Okay, so that's it.
the dressing nicely has been a passion of mine even before the car accident like i want to look good i want to feel good i want to present myself in the way that i want to i don't want anything to hold me back yes i was told that i would not be able to do some things after the accident but i decided that i wouldn't let those comments stop me and so because i wouldn't let those comments stop me i figured out ways to do the things that i wanted to do i figured out ways to wear the clothes that i wanted to wear so it's just you have to be your own advocate you have to be your own cheerleader leggings jeggings like things that you can use even your wrist to pull up because before i got full control of my hand i had to use my wrist for a lot of things like wrist action was everything okay and i know this because i didn't have full control before I'm not just somebody that from day one I've had full control of my hands since the accident. No, there was a time that I had only wrist control. There was a time that I had to use um, like all these devices to be able to pick my fork up and stuff like that. But things change. You have to decide not to let yourself go. It's the same with even able-bodied people, people who are walking, people who are fine, people who are not on a wheelchair. Everybody decides every day, okay, to move on. We all choose each day to just keep persevering. If you don't do that, you're going to end up in a dark, dark place. You're not going to feel good about yourself. It has nothing to do with, oh, because you're in a wheelchair, that's why you're sad. Some people who are walking are way worse than you. If you're watching this video and you've said to yourself, because I'm in a wheelchair, that's why my life is this way, please don't think like that. There are so many people that are not in a wheelchair and they would, they would want to trade places with you. I hope you guys like this video and you are okay with my extreme TMI. I hope this video wasn't too rambly rambly and I was able to answer some pressing questions that you guys may have. I honestly want to do this more frequently. That's it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys for watching this video. If I post it. <laughs> I think I'll post it. Yeah. I'll post it. It's okay.